Well, good morning, boys and girls. Today, I'm really excited for our kids capsule because I have a picture of something with me that I'm gonna show you in just a minute. And it's a picture of something that most people like. In fact, when, when most people see these things that I'm gonna show you in the picture, they get really, really happy. And I want you just to raise your hand if you like balloons. How many of you boys and girls like balloons? Uh, I love balloons. I, re I remember being excited about balloons when I was your age. And I still get excited about balloons because they're, they're big and they're colorful. And uh, it just looks amazing when there's a bunch of them together. Now, I want to ask you a question, boys and girls, because sometimes balloons, sometimes balloons just have air in them. Like if we blow them up and we let go of them, they're just going to kind of float to the ground, right? But there are other balloons where you put a gas inside of them that is called helium. Now, some of you know what happens when you put helium inside the balloon. Those are the balloons that you've got to hold on to, right? Those are the balloons where there's usually a string attached that you can hold on to. Now, I remember when I was a little boy, I had a balloon on a string. And all of a sudden, I wanted to see how far that balloon would go if I let go of it. And you know what, boys and girls? I let it go, and you know what happened, right? That balloon just went up, 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 up. Up. And, and I remember just looking at it and, and I, I didn't blink. I didn't take my eyes away from it because I wanted to see how far I could see that balloon go in the air. And I remember to where it was just, just a tiny, tiny dot and then I couldn't see it anymore. It reminds me of, of a, a story in the Bible, a true story that takes place after Jesus was raised from the dead. Remember, boys and girls, we celebrated not too long ago the celebration of Easter. And that's what we celebrate is Jesus being raised from the dead. But when Jesus was raised from the dead, the Bible tells us that he spent 40 days with his friends. We call them the disciples or the apostles, but they were the friends of Jesus. And he taught them about the kingdom of God. He taught them about what he was going to be doing in the earth. And when we get to a book called Acts, it reminds me of these balloons that just kind of go up, 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 up till they disappear. Because the Bible tells us in Acts chapter one that Jesus was talking to these disciples. And as he was talking to them, a cloud came around and he was lifted up. And he, and he just was lifted up, lifted up, lifted up, lifted up, lifted up, just like those balloons, until they couldn't see him anymore. And what was happening there is that Jesus was going up into heaven. Now we call that, and this is a, a word that you can learn, it's called the ascension. 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 And all that means is it's Jesus being raised up into heaven where he now sits at the right hand of God as king of all the universe. So boys and girls, I don't know about you, but the next time I see balloons, especially if I see balloons that someone has let go of and those balloons are going up, 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 up in the sky, I want to be reminded of Jesus who ascended into heaven and is king of the universe. That just like those balloons, he went up, 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 up. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for this day that we remember your ascension. That time where just like balloons go up, up, up until you can't see them anymore, you went up, up, up in the sky. And Lord, we know that you are seated beside God the Father and that you are king of the universe. Lord, I pray that for uh, all of our, the boys and girls today and even the grown-ups that are listening today, that when we see balloons in the sky, 
that we would be reminded that Jesus went up into heaven, that he ascended, and that he is now king of the universe. Lord Jesus, be king of our hearts today. In your name we pray, amen. Bye, kids. Hey, everybody. For the past couple weeks, we've been practicing No Longer Slaves. So join us now as we sing again. You unravel me with melody. You surround me with a song of deliverance from my enemies till all my fears have gone. This week, we are so excited to talk about Peter and the power of prayer. Check out this game. Let's play a game that's called All Ears. If Dad says, 
I'm going to give you chocolate if you listen. Are you going to listen? Yes! Question two. You're playing Legos and mom asks you to clean your room. Would you? Mm, I'd really try, but I think it would be hard to do that because it's really, really hard when you want to do something and you, you would be doing the opposite. Number three, you're starving and somebody says, dinner's ready, are you listening? i definitely listen if I were starving. Do you know who always listens? God. How do we listen? We listen with our eyes. We listen with our ears. We listen with our brain. And that means that we're focused on what the other person is saying. And not what we have to say. Communication is two ways. That's right, kids. Communication is two ways. When I talk to God, I've learned to hear his voice the way that he wants me to hear it. The Bible says that the sheep will know the shepherd's voice. The shepherd is Jesus and the sheep is us. So the more we talk to Jesus and talk to the one that we truly love and we truly care for, the more we're gonna understand how he's talking back. And he will speak in a specific way that we can understand him. Today we're gonna learn about the power of prayer and this awesome story Peter's escape from prison. Let's watch. So we've been learning about Paul and the power of the Holy Spirit. But while the Holy Spirit was working in Paul's life, he was also working in the other disciples. And today we're learning in Acts chapter 12 about Peter and his power in the Holy Spirit. See, Peter had been continuing to speak the word of God and being bold for God and stepping out and sharing the gospel message, the good news that Jesus had died um, and saved them from sin and death. And today we're going to learn that God hears and listens to our prayers. So Peter had actually been put in jail um, for speaking the good news, for sharing the word of Jesus. He was um, put in jail and his friends didn't know what to do, so they prayed. And what's really cool about prayer, about talking to God, is that it has nothing to do with how we act or um, what we can offer God, but it has everything to do with his goodness and his power and his love for us. And he so wants to pour that over our lives, and today we're going to see how he did that with Peter. Today's story is from Acts 12, verses 1 through 18. Mean King Herod was on Peter's tail and had him locked up tight in jail. Sixteen soldiers, that's eight plus eight, stood guard in the cell and watched the gate. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Peter's friends prayed to God in heaven. Seven, six, five, four, three, and two. I see an angel here. Don't you? The angel woke Peter and said, it's time to hurry. I'll help you escape King Herod's fury. Peter's chains fell off with a clink, clank, ping. Said the angel, get dressed. That's the next thing. So Peter got dressed in his coat and shoes while those big scary guards were just taking a snooze. Peter followed the angel right out of the cell and thought, is this a dream? I really can't tell. Then the big gate swung open with a big old creak and none of the guards even took a peek. Peter and the angel walked straight ahead while everyone was still in bed. They walked in the light of the moon that shone, and all of a sudden, Peter was all alone. He scratched his head and he looked around and said, here I am in the middle of town. An amazing thing just happened to me. God's angel came and set me free. Peter knew that all of his friends had been praying, so he went right over to the place they were staying. He pounded on the door with a knock, knock, knock. And when Rhoda answered, she had quite a shock for she knew very well it was Peter's voice. So she ran to tell the others, it's Peter, rejoice. Peter waited outside impatiently till the others came running to the door to see. They pushed the front door open wide and there was Peter standing outside. Shh, Peter said, let me tell my tale. An angel came and set me free from jail. That's what happens when people pray. So pray for the people you love each day. So the Bible tells us how important prayer is to Jesus. 
Um, it talks about him rising early in the morning, like before the sun is even up, or staying up late at night to go out by himself and to pray and just be with the Father. And so prayer is, is our positioning. It's both talking, but also receiving and listening to what, what God has to speak to us. Prayer was so important to Jesus that the disciples would ask him how to pray. And that's how we got the gift of the Lord's Prayer. Um, if you've been watching Pastor Tim's sermon with your parents, you'll notice that every service, whether we're in church and in the actual building, or we're here at home watching on our phones or tablets or our televisions, that the service ends with the Lord's Prayer. And it's such a gift. It's the direct words of Jesus teaching us how to talk to the Father. God hears and answers our prayers because He loves us and He wants good things for us. And so the Lord's Prayer is such an amazing prayer to pray. Um, it teaches us that we open with praise and thanksgiving, that we ask for um, forgiveness for where we've messed up. And we then pray for, for others um, and that, that God's kingdom would come. And then it ends with um, us asking for ourselves that God would help keep us from, from messing up and that we would walk in His boldness and His power and in His will. So sometimes we close our eyes and we're quiet and we're in a receiving position, but there are lots of different ways to pray. So we're going to talk about just a few of those today. Um, and I'd like to challenge you this week to kind of go out and, and see how God's leading you in prayer. So sometimes there's walking prayers. And right now, today is a beautiful day um, to try a walking prayer. You can go outside and notice God's creation. Um, it's springtime. It's beautiful out. You can see his trees and his birds, um, maybe some cool animals or flowers. And we see God's creation and we know that he's the creator. He's the one who made all of that. He's so creative. And his artistic mind and heart can blow us away and really touch us deep in our souls. There's also one word prayers or, or maybe like a short verse or phrase where you can just um, maybe say it one time or maybe repeat. And I like to pray just thank you. Over and over as we go through our days, we can see all the good gifts that God has for us. Um, and that really helps keep me centered and focused on what God is doing rather than kind of my own thought process. There's also like artistic prayers. Um, I like to journal. In the morning, I might open up a book and just um, pray to God that way and be listening for him to speak in my life. Um, some people like to play with clay and kind of pray that way or draw what they're feeling spirit is leading them to. Sometimes people color. Um, there's lots of different ways we can pray. So today I'd like you to um, listen and feel in your heart what God is calling you to and the way he's asking you to pray and go ahead and, and try that and let us know what you think and maybe send us pictures of how you were praying this week. It'd be lovely to see you. So let's talk about it. Why were Peter's friends surprised when he came to the door? Peter was in jail for doing the right thing, um, for speaking the word of God and sharing the good news that Jesus had told him that he should share. Um, and he went to jail for it. And Sometimes bad things happen to us and we don't see a way out. We don't see how God is working. But what's really cool is while our vision is limited, um, God's is not. So he has people and places and resources, that's things to help you, um, that aren't even in your realm of thought. And so Peter showing up um, to his friends and, and telling them an angel helped me escape was not in the realm of anyone's thinking. It wasn't what anyone was imagining when they said like, oh, please help Peter. Um, but God has so much power and, and things available that we don't see all the time. And he's working all of those things for the good of those who love him. And so sometimes when we pray, um, we might not even see an answer that God has for us. We might not even imagine like in our wildest imaginations we couldn't fathom that that an angel was going to set peter free from free from jail so god can do big things things that are outside of our thinking the word says that his ways are higher than 
our ways and his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. And so we trust him. We trust him fully that he's doing good for us um, and that he loves us and he's working things out that aren't even in our realm of thinking. How will what we did today affect the way you pray in the future? I think that it's important to remember that we don't have to stay in one mode of prayer. So a lot of times we think that we need to be quiet and sit still and, and cross our, our hands and maybe our legs and shut our eyes and that that's the way that we can talk to God. But our lesson today was a good reminder that God uses a ton of different ways um, to speak to us and we can speak to him in a ton of different ways. God isn't put off by our, our dancing and jumping around. We see King David praying like that. Um, he isn't put off by our lack of words. The book of Romans says that we don't even have to pray words sometimes. Just our heart is crying out to God um, when we don't know what to say. We can pray through art, which I think is really cool. Um, we can draw, um, and I think it's important with that that maybe we don't um, think too much about what we're doing, but just kind of start doing it. And I really like enjoyed trying that lately. Um, maybe watercolors or color pencils or coloring and just receiving God that way. Um, I think right now is a great time to do walking prayers or just being outside in nature and really looking for God to speak to you through his creation. So I think today was a really cool reminder that um, we can pray in all those kinds of ways just as we communicate with our, our family and we have talks with our brothers or sisters or spend time with our parents or our grandparents. God loves all those ways of being together too. And today was a really important reminder for me, and I hope for you, um, that God wants you in all those ways. Let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you for loving us enough to hear and answer our prayer. Help grow us in the spirit of prayer and help us help each other. In Jesus' name, amen. And you know what's next. It's time for our memory verse. We're in week four of our memory verse. Um, let's try and do the first part. Do you remember it? The first part is, good job guys, when I am afraid, I put my trust in you. Great job guys. Um, this is such an awesome word to, to put in you, to, to have um, seeded in your heart that whenever we're afraid or feeling feelings, um, that we aren't defined by them. So you can be afraid and you can be angry, but you are God's child and he loves you all the time and he's with you. So we might have feelings, but we aren't our feelings. Um, we're so much more and we're esteemed and redeemed by God, which means he loves us and he saved us. Um, and we're, we don't have to stay in our fear. We can put our trust in him. Thanks for joining us and I hope you have a great week. Bye-bye, guys. Hope you have a great week. Bye.